Hey there everyone, welcome today to the Power of 10, bringing you 10 powerful minutes of training and sharing that will expand your mind, improve your performance and boost your energy so that you are showing up as your best self today. Um, my name is Mary Ann Smith. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a personal transformation and business coach for the modern women in business. And I support ambitious business women globally to step confidently into their CEO role, lead powerfully from their unique feminine genius and expand their wealth to not only be able to create the life they were born to live, but also to have an amazing impact on the world that we live in. Now today, I am risking it for a biscuit. <laughs> I am, as you know, we're celeb I'm celebrating with you um, being in Tenerife. I am, and it's a kind of, it's an overcast day. It's lovely and cool. And it's had that kind of warm Spanish rain today. It's, and I always say it's like warm Spanish rain because it's not Scottish rain. Scottish rain is horizontal. Um, so I've come under the canopy today. Um, to be able to be with you. So if it starts to rain, hey, we've had a bit of warning. Um, remember, if you're joining me, wherever you're joining me from, write in the chat any questions you have about what I have got to share today, because today is all about how to stay super focused. Um, earlier on today, and when I, my post, I talked about um, when your head's just full of stuff and you can't empty it. And I thought we'll go a wee bit deeper into just helping you to stay super focused because a lot of the women that come into my programs, my junior CEO and my Elevate to Epic programs, they say, I just can't keep my head in this. My head is too full. So first thing that you can do about that is to, one, just be aware <laughs> that your body is doing stuff without you even trying here your body automatically likes to think about things in uh, the future and in the past because the present is the most uncertain because it's a real uncertainty. It's like facing it right up there. Whereas in the future, it has the potentiality to be uncertain. In the past, your body feels it's pretty safe because it's done it. And that's a whole other subject for another day. Um, and the second thing is be aware that your mind will just naturally wander anyway. It's not because there's anything wrong with you. So get those couple of concepts about your own nervous system just in place. And then commit to being focused. Now that might seem obvious, but you have to make a commitment here and in your mind that I am going to take action with intention to improve my focus. Now, the first thing to do that is to think about how getting more present day to day generally, because when we think about getting focused, we usually think about a task or something that we have to do, and then we give that a focus that we need to stay focused on. Actually, if you're not staying focused, there'll be things in your general way that you live and be that you aren't very present. Now, being focused is about being very present and living in that moment, whatever it is. Do you know, whether it's a conversation or a piece of work, it's about living in that moment and getting present. So there's a few things you can do for that. One is to start to notice um, what your body is doing day to day. Do you know, what is triggering you to not actually be present? What kind of language have you got in your head going that is stopping you from being present day to day? Do you know you may ha have negative language in your head that's going, oh, this is too hard. You can't do this. Just leave that for another day. You can do that after lunch. Just start to become really, really aware. Start to become aware of um, what's going on in your environment that maybe triggers you not to, to be present in a moment. Do you know, something might trigger you really powerfully that puts you right off focus for another day and you've been putting yourself in that environment all of the time. Start to think about whether you're actually bringing in practices into your day that encourage you to be present. Now, you'll hear people talking about journaling, meditating, breathing, all of this. Now, some of you might be thinking that's a whole load of woo. 
It's a whole load of important stuff that I never used to do at all, never used to do, because my head, which is all full of masculine drive, determination, success, achievement, would dismiss it because whenever I tried it, it was difficult. I'm going to tell you that journaling, meditation and breathing is difficult. And it's difficult because our minds are built to wander, like I said when we started this. And it's a practice that you have to get into the way of doing. And like anything, the more you practice, the easier it will get. And then you'll start to change and go more deeply in it. So just be aware, if you're not doing any of these practices anyway, then is it any surprise that you're not feeling present when you're maybe in trying to have a nice time out with your kids, do you know, having a beautiful conversation? So start to think about what you could bring into your daily life. And it's all about starting to raise your consciousness about why you're not being focused, why you're not being present at the moment. That then brings us on, that whole process will start you on a journey of noticing what boundaries you have in place. What boundaries do you have in place that allow you, that help you to stay focused? If you don't have boundaries in place and are constantly saying yes to everybody's demands around you, then you're not going to stay focused. You're going to be completely distracted all of the time. So you need to start raising into your consciousness, why am I saying yes to her all the time? Because she's saying to me, stop doing that bit of work on your laptop. I want you to go to the shops. I want you to pick me up this. I want you to do that. And you're reacting the whole time. What's causing that? Start to become very conscious about what's causing that. Then there's some practical things around boundaries. One is to be thinking about, do you have a default diary in place? Now, this is a nice little exercise for you. If you look in my diary, I have what I call a default diary, um, so that the birds have joined us today. Um, But a default diary is I don't start work before 10 o'clock while seeing clients. I've got lots of things I do before that point, and the birds are agreeing with me. I then have certain things I do on a Monday. I have certain things. So there's, there's just chunks of time blocked out in this default diary. I've then also looked at what are the most important things that I need to do to be able to, in my business every day, and those things are blocked into. I am very, very clear about what the high impact stuff is. I am very, very clear about the the work, that the space that I give for my own development, for my journaling, for my meditation, for my yoga, for all of my self-care, for being able to have space to cook properly, because when I'm rushing cooking, I don't enjoy it. And there's no point, I I don't get present with it, but just really noticing what's going on for you. The other part about boundaries as well is it's easier to say no to something if you're strongly connected to why you're doing the task at hand. So when people talk about why, what's your big why? Honestly, because it's used all the time, it can kind of diminish in value, but it is so important. I'm only here in Tenerife been able to have this vacation for the last two months because the 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 why to have freedom, the why to work anywhere in the world, what that meant for my family, my relationships, my connections, my life was so strong that when somebody came into my life and said, can you do this? I would ask myself, is that going to take me a step forward to my why, my purpose of getting this freedom? And if it was no, then the answer was no. Somebody yesterday said to me, um, can you get an appointment on this day at quarter past 11? I says, I don't do appointments on that day at quarter past 11. You can have an 11 or a 12, but I'm not doing quarter past. And they were really shocked. I've got real strong boundaries because I've got things I know that are important for me to stay focused on because they take me a step forward towards my why, my passion. And the other part about focus is that it's more about distraction and there's some practical things. Do you know, look at your environment right away. Do you know, if you've got your phone constantly sitting there looking at you, flashing at you, if you're staying up for late night TV and exhausting your mind so that your sleep isn't good, good quality, if you've got your notifications on, I haven't, I'm just noticing I haven't switched my WhatsApp off and the high chance that that might peak while I'm doing this. All of these little distractions stop you from focusing, even if you've got the strongest intention. 
because all of these things are there to pull you away from what you're doing. And you have to ask yourself, is looking at that TikTok going to take me a step closer to where I want to be? So the outcome of doing these three things, getting committed to being focused, starting to be aware of your own nervous system, getting really present and putting in practices that allow you just to practice presence day in, day out, journaling, meditating, breathing, where are you with all of that just now? What boundaries do you have in place that support you to say no to the wrong things, to the things that won't help you to move forward in direction that's right for you, that is right for you? Do you have structures in place that allow you, that support you to say no, like my default diary does, and I'm committed to it? Are you connected to your why? Think about that for today. And what distractions have you just got on as you're sitting watching this and you're thinking, oh gosh, I've got every notification on. My phone's beeping away here. That's why. Become aware of it. And the outcome of all of that is that you are more likely to get more stuff done and the right things done that fill you with joy. And when you get things done and you can tick them off, you can celebrate your success, that reduces your stress, it increases your self-worth, it makes you feel more motivated, it puts joy out there for you to experience, and you get more presence. It just happens automatically, all of the time. Because if you're not doing this stuff and you're failing and your to-do list building up, you keep it in your head. Then when you go out with your kids or you're having dinner with your wife and you're sitting there thinking, what am I still to do? What have I still to do? It's because you've not put these three things in. So folks, today, the power of 10, do these things and let me know what you discover when you take some time to reflect on them. Let me know if you take action and what the impact is. And whatever channel you're watching this on, pop it into the comments and uh, share it with me. And I guarantee I will show up and I will respond to anything that you post, any questions that you might have on all of this. So that is the power of 10, how to get super focused for today. If any of this resonates with you and you've got value, remember to like, comment, share. I really appreciate that. Um, and if you're interested in being able to step in to do more about that, my Genius CEO program, from which all of these little nuggets comes from, they're all the little grains of sand that are in there. If you want to step in to taking big action in there, reach out to me. It's dead easy. Just drop me a DM. The program at the moment is open to applications and I have the bonus in there that I'm securing the 2021 price for it until the 14th of February. Um, a bit of love because we're celebrating here. So now is the time to take action if you are ready to really step into anything that I talk about in the power of 10. Otherwise, you can check me out at mariannesmith.com, LinkedIn, Facebook, and my Facebook group, The Fierce and Fabulous Society. So I look forward to seeing you again in the power of 10 and have a super, super focused day. Take care, everyone.